Hello everyone. My name is Adrian Marches and I'm the publisher and editor of ModAnalyst.com, the premier online community for business analysts. I would like to welcome you to today's webinar titled Access, Investigate and Deliver Data with Simple Workflows and Automation. Today's featured speaker is Daniel Norwood, Senior Product Manager with Quest Software. The webinar would last approximately 60 minutes including a Q&A session. So make sure to submit your questions in advance using the questions feature of the webinar software. I would like to say thank you to Quest Software for sponsoring this event. At this time, I will turn it over to Daniel to get us started. All right. Thank you very much, Adrian. Appreciate it. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, it's uh, early in the morning here in California, so wherever you are, good afternoon or good morning. Um, as Adrian said, my name is Daniel Norwood, and I'm, I work here at Quest Software. So we're going to spend the next uh, 45 minutes or so talking about some of the um, uh, some of the challenges to data access and uh, delivery, and we're going to work through uh, a couple of scenarios dealing with those challenges inside of uh, one of Quest products, Toad for Data Analyst, uh, to show you how you can um, simplify a lot of the workflow and uh, even get to the point of automating some of your processes. So just a little bit about me. Um, I, this is actually the, the worst slide in the presentation. I, I don't like talking about myself, but I like to make sure that everybody um, is at least aware of, of who I am and who Quest is, and so we'll at least start there. So um, I've been with Quest for about 10 years and working in the database industry just as long. I um, uh, have been working with our Toad product line for um, almost that entire time, and I've spent a lot of time working with customers throughout my, uh, my time here at Quest. I've been focused on um, in my different roles from R&D to um, customer service and project management and, um, and other ca uh, capacities, I've been focused uh, completely on just trying to make sure that all of our Quest products are simple and meet the customer's needs. And so um, I've had the, the privilege and pleasure of working with a, a number of other um, wonderful people here at Quest um, uh, for a while now working on these Toad products. So Quest, if you're not familiar with Quest, Quest was founded in the late 80s, and we went public at the end of 1990s, uh, 1999, and we're about 3,500 employees now. We're centered here in um, Southern California in Aliso Viejo, which is in Orange County, if you're not familiar with, um, uh, with that. And we've got four main business units where we focus on virtualization, application management, Windows management, and database management. And so the, um, the group that I work in is the database management group, and so we focus on trying to meet the needs of uh, customers as they work with data in the database or manage the database itself. So for those of you who may not be familiar with Toad, which is sort of what we're going to be talking about today in the context of uh, the challenges that we have with data investigation and uh, discovery and, and um, uh, delivery. Toad is actually a product that's been around for a very long time. It started with Toad for Oracle back in the, the mid-90s and quickly became the de facto standard for Oracle development and soon administration uh, in the market with several million users today. And so that, from that platform uh, in the Oracle market, Quest has delivered um, similar Toad products for DB2, for SQL Server, Sybase, MySQL, um, for DBAs and for developers. Now we've got products for uh, .NET and Java developers as they work with uh, their primary coding languages um, most of the time, but then still need the tools to be able to work with the database from time to time. And, um, and also this product, which is uh, focused on the, the data-oriented professionals like the business analysts. And so now we have a full product family of uh, Toad products, which are all focused on data professionals, database developers, database administrators. Um, uh, so wherever, you, wherever you're at, whatever platform you're working on, there's probably a Toad that's going to focus on your pain. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk for a few minutes about current trends and data growth and management um, and, and what, that, what that means for us as business analysts. Um, how we get to the data today, because contrary to a number of our other peers who are focused more on um, managing the database itself or dealing with um, you know, the program, uh, programmability objects inside of the database and trying to work with applications, we're focused on the data that's actually there. And so it's our job to 
get that data, to work with the data, to understand it, make sense of it, uh, make sure it's clean, and so on. There's lots of different things which are fall to us to, to manage. And so we're going to look at some of those challenges, like data access, being able to get to the data in the first place. Um, investigation, how do we go through the process of investigating uh, the data in the database? Delivery, once we've, once we've spent some time working through um, connecting to the database, um, investigating the, the database and the objects that are there and the data contained in them, how do we get the data back out to, um, in some cases, ourselves, if, if we're doing um, deep analysis for our, for our own needs, or if we're going to deliver that to somebody else, how do we do that? And then, you know, productivity is such a big topic in, uh, today as well. When we think about uh, the economy and um, how all of us are probably all overworked doing, uh, wearing multiple hats and doing multiple jobs, we need to focus on how can we be productive with our time so that we can meet the demands that are placed on us. So we'll do, what we'll do is we'll look at those challenges in the context of um, you know, the simple workflows and automation that we can provide with Topher Data Analysts uh, to collectively deliver better productivity. And then we'll, we'll talk about um, uh, you know, further resources and we'll go into a Q&A session. So definitely queue up your questions, be thinking about your questions throughout the presentation, and then we'll do, devote some time at the end to speak to those directly. So let's talk a little bit about the trends in data growth. Um, this data comes from Forrester, and um, you know, pr all of these point to um, rapid rises in the, just the, the volume of data. 50% um, annual growth in transactional data year over year, and that, that might even increase. Um, you know, what we've seen in, in the data market for uh, a long time is that uh, as our computers grow, as the web continues to change the way that we work, the way that we interact, we begin to see that um, you know we're storing data of all different types. Uh, we're storing data about click-throughs, and we're storing data about uh, user experience, and we're storing data about um, transactions, and we're storing data about data with master data management. I mean, we're we're storing data about everything, and um, so you know that leads to massive data growth. It leads to headaches for trying to manage the the actual platforms of the data. Like you can see that. Um, most enterprises now have uh, databases, or more than 50 databases, that are over one terabyte in size. Whereas, you know, not not even more than a few years ago, we were talking about oh, terabyte databases are pretty big. Well, now terabyte databases are very common, and we're now looking at petabyte and and perhaps beyond that. Um, we're looking at cloud databases. We're looking at NoSQL databases. How do we manage this massive influx of data, um, which is which is causing a lot of cost? causing um, you know, a lot of uh, maintenance and, and platform issues. And just, you know, for, for those of us on the phone, you know, we're not as concerned about how do we manage it, but we're concerned about how do we actually, you know, sift through it and make sense of it. And so um, this is a challenge that's only going to get worse as, as time goes on. Um, but it can be a fun challenge. It can be an interesting challenge, one that we can, um, you know, we can really sink our teeth into and, and provide some real value back to the business. So when it comes to actually getting at that data, there are a number of ways that, that that can happen. So we can begin, if you look at the bottom left of the, of the slide here, um, today, and this is changing a little bit with, with cloud databases, but today what we see is most of our data is stored in some sort of relational database or data warehouse. And in a perfect world, you would find that um, all of this data would be neatly aggregated, um, everything is normalized. Um, it's all it's all local uh, localized into a single data warehouse, which is well structured and just perfect, right? But we all know that that's not the case. We all know that while we may have one or two or many more uh, data warehouses, there are still plenty of shadow systems which exist, or there's the old transactional system which came from the last company that we acquired, which hasn't been merged yet into the uh, the data warehouse or we have reporting instances coming out of uh, finance and HR and the sales team and, and other groups where we find that um, everybody has kind of created their own little shadow copy of the database or the data uh, and they're trying to work with that data. Or maybe we have systems from different uh, geographies. So we have an Oracle system here in North America and we've got some other system uh, tracking transactional data over in Asia or over in Europe. And so our data is spread all over the place, both geographically and um, and across different platforms. And so what we try to do is we try to 
um, do our best uh, as organizations to, to aggregate that and bring that together into similar places. But the, the fact remains that, there, that we, have to, um, we have to be able to work within the confines that, we, that are placed upon us. And so we build our business intelligence systems to look at data in the different places that we have it. So for the business end users, they're going to focus on getting their data through um, a, a BI dashboard or some other front end. So maybe it's business objects, Cognos, or one of the Oracle products, uh, or, or some other um, business intelligence suite. But we're going to find that, um, you know, just like we wish everything was was aggregated and, and um, you know, localized into uh, one common structure, um, business intelligence is never going to really deliver every, you know, an answer to every question that we want to ask of it. In fact, I think what we, we probably find more often is that every time we, we, we're given the answer to a question, that answer begs another question. And so we find ourselves going back and forth with um, uh, uh, the, the end users is the end users say, well, this isn't in the business intelligence dashboard. I need to know X. I need to, to understand why this is this way, or I need to see the data behind that. And so um, for now, at least, and for the foreseeable, the foreseeable future, we're, we're dealing with a situation where business intelligence is delivering um, less than 100%, hopefully greater than 80 or 90%, but less than 100% of the answers to our questions. And so that, that means that there's a very strong need for business analysts and other data professionals who can go directly to the database and work with the data um, and work wherever it resides and try and understand um, uh, you know, how to deliver um, answers to the questions that the, the business is asking. And so um, in my work with business analysts, I found that a lot of people will use um, a variety of tools uh, you'll use one tool for one platform and another tool for another platform. Uh, you might use Microsoft Excel um, to actually connect to some databases and try and uh, get data out with ODBC. Or maybe, um, and this is a little more common, you'll use Microsoft Access. And there are other tools which are more advanced, but um, uh, they, they, have off, they offer differing levels of, of uh, competency or access to data. And so, um, uh, with most of the business analysts I work with, they're, they're commonly dealing with multiple tools. And the same goes for IT. So a lot of times, um, you know, the, the business analysts won't have the tools, the proper tools to be able to connect to some of the relational systems. And so they'll even have to go back to IT um, and ask for IT to deliver a data report. And so for IT, you're, you're commonly working with um, the developer or administration tools um, which are generally platform specific and, and designed for, for you know, building code or for managing table spaces and, and the like. And so there's a variety of tools that are out there um, which people are using to get the job done. Um, but I think that there's, there's actually a better way. And so what we want to focus on is you know, in the context of our challenges that we have for getting into data and for um, you know, working with the data, investigating it and delivering it, um, you know, Toad for Data Analyst is the first of our Toad products, which was really designed to um, to understand the unique pains and uh, workflows that are common to the business analyst or just more generally the, the data-oriented professional and try and deliver a tool which met those needs. Um, and, you know, one that is focused on their workflow and uh, the way that, that you work. And so um, with Toad for Data Analyst, we're going to focus on how we can get directly, uh, connect directly to those relational systems and uh, work more efficiently. So when we talk about this, this process, we're looking at, at um, uh, a couple of components, basically three components. First is access. I need to be able to connect to my database. Um, I need to connect to flat files. I need to connect to uh, whatever source uh, my data is, is coming from. Secondly, I need the ability to investigate that data or the, um, the source that I'm connected to. So I need to be able to browse the data. I need to be able to see the relationships. I need to be able to um, write queries and go through an iterative ad hoc process directly working with the database. And then I need to be able to deliver once I get that data or once I do my analysis and I build some uh, uh, you know, some knowledge into what the data is, I need to be able to turn that back around and deliver that back out to um, probably someone in the business. And so all of that is wrapped around, um, or wrapped around all of that, rather, is the, the issue of productivity. Um, you know, a lot of what we do is, is very 
time intensive and very demanding. Um, and if you're like anybody else that I've, I've worked with, you'll, you can probably relate to um, having a, a very full schedule where there's always um, another request in the queue. There's, there's more and more to do. And so um, being able to automate the processes or work very efficiently is extremely important. So that's why we created Toad for Data Analysts. We wanted to give you the ability to access data wherever it was, regardless of the platform. Uh, we wanted to give you the ability to investigate data, be able to write queries. Um, and you know, I'll add that whether you're, you're familiar with SQL or whether you're not familiar with SQL, uh, you'll still be able to create queries inside of Toad for Data Analysts um, very effectively and very efficiently. Uh, but you'll need to be able to view the relationships and compare and sync data. Um, be able to deliver that data into a variety of formats, whether that's a PDF uh, report that you've got a lot of charts in, or whether that's Excel data or, or flat data uh, in a text file or, or other format. And then um, being able to automate and even schedule a lot of the tasks. A lot of people that I talk to find that um, um, the, the scheduling capabilities and the automation capabilities really are where they find the most value from, from Toad in terms of um, time savings. They, they can do something once, automate the process, and move on to the next thing, and then that's always going to be done. So we believe that this is a, a valuable solution to, to meet these pains. And so the way that Topher Data Analysis is, divine, um, is laid out and designed is that we begin with a step of, of definition, so define in the, uh, the um, I guess it's the 10 o'clock position of, the, of that circle. So we need to be able to um, scope our project uh, for, for data analysis gather requirements, uh, and be able to connect to our databases. We need to be able to understand where does the data reside, um, be able to identify the data relationships uh, and how the data is structured, being able to query next, being able to visualize the query, gather um, data from disparate sources. Um, can I query from multiple sources at the same time, for instance, and join that data across those platforms? Um, and then once I've built my query, how do I export that? And then how do I publish that? And then, like we said, automation. So this is, this is the life cycle that we try to focus on with Tote for Data Analysts, and one which I feel is uh, pretty characteristic of most people, though you would probably spend more time in one, one particular part of the cycle than another. Most people end up going through a cycle much like this. So let's begin talking about our challenges, looking at, at how Tote for Data Analysts um, helps you with these challenges. So the first is accessing data. Um, like we said, a lot of people work with multiple tools, um, one tool for this platform, one tool for that platform, or um, you're working with tools which are designed for a database developer or an administrator. Um, even if it's a cross-platform tool, a tool which allows you to connect to anything, um, oftentimes we're working with tools which are not designed for the data professional, they're designed for a coder, somebody that, that has different um, pains, different interests. So um, multiple tools are required, and then um, you know when the going gets tough and we can't connect to the data or we can't um, find a way to, to build the query with some of our other tools, uh, we often have to, to resort to going to IT and looking to IT to deliver data for us. So let me switch over to Toad for Data Analyst, and let's begin looking at how this works. So this is the first screen we see in Toad for Data Analyst. Um, this is a, a quick guide. You can turn it on and off. Uh, but it's designed to sort of mimic that workflow that we were talking about. And as I look at um, Toad for Data Analysts uh, in the quick guide, I can, I can see that these, um, each of these steps relate back to um, features in the product. So as I begin uh, a query process today, um, I'm going to start with understanding. So I'm going to connect to a database, and then I need to understand. I need to understand where my data is and, and some of the things we've already talked about. Uh, so I can do that visually through the ER diagrammer, which I recognize may be new for a number of you, but we'll talk about how that can, can really help our process of, of data analysis. Uh, or maybe I, I want to go straight to the data and just begin exploring the data through the database explorer here. Um, and then I can move into querying. So I'm going to work on querying in a visual format with a query builder, much, much like uh, one that you would find inside of uh, Microsoft Access or inside of uh, the SQL editor, if I'm more comfortable with SQL and I want to get my hands dirty and sort of roll up my sleeves, I can do that with the SQL editor and, um, and customize the code um, uh, completely. And then from there, reporting, whether that's through Excel or using what we call Toad Reports, which is that banded report designer where I can build in charts and graphs, and then publishing that and automating that. So the nice thing about the Quick Guide is I can actually jump straight into 
a particular part of the product. So I'm going to click on the database explorer. Now, this is our connection screen. And so as we've mentioned, one of the most uh, important things about um, uh, our job is being able to get to the data where, wherever that data resides. So if I look at creating a new connection, you can see that I have the ability to connect to just about any database platform that's out there right now. Um, you'll see the, the top, um, top four or five, I guess the top five listed here. Uh, and that would be DB2, MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, and Sybase. Um, you might have another database, though, that, that doesn't fit with one of those. Those are the, the databases which, have, uh, which we use native drivers for. And so you're going to get the, the fastest um, experience when you're working with those database platforms. Uh, but we also have ODBC. And so um, we do keep ODBC around uh, in order to allow you to connect to those other databases that we don't have um, this native support for. So um, if you connect to Postgres or Greenplum, I know a number of our customers use Greenplum, Netiza, Teradata, um, a number of the different um, database formats that are out there which don't fall into that a category of the top five in the RDBMS space. Um, but we also have the ability to connect directly to Microsoft Access um, because that is still a, a database, albeit a desktop database, and Microsoft Excel. So if I have data in, in an Excel file, I can connect to that and I can work with that data as uh, a table inside of Topher Data Analyst. So I'm not going to create a new connection at the moment, but we can just wanted to show you that those exist. So I've got connections created right now to Access, to Excel, Oracle, and Sybase. So I'm going to spend most of my time in the Oracle database today because that's where um, my background is. But we're going to start by connecting to this Excel file. So I have an Excel file which is actually just on my desktop. And um, this is just a file that I can use for, uh, like as a lookup table. It's not actually in the database that I'm connected to. But it, it keeps track of the regions and, uh, and the region ID. And so it's a nice, helpful um, uh, 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 lookup table that I use from time to time. So now that we're in the product, let me sort of give you a little bit of an orientation. Across the top, you can see our, our um, stages of this query process uh, listed across the top. And so what we'll do with that is we'll actually hide certain windows depending upon what you're working on. So, um, but when I get to the time uh, to work on an automation script, I don't need all the clutter of um, the windows that I use for understanding and, and querying and, and building my report open and uh, in the way. So we'll actually hide those and group them under one of these buttons. So um, the database browser and the, uh, the ER diagrammer, um, both are part of this understand stage. So they'll be, they'll be grouped together under understand. So um, as I click on the tools on my toolbar, I can see how those are going to um, um, they'll open up new windows down here. So on the left-hand side is the navigation manager, and the navigation manager is where I can keep track of my uh, connections. I can have multiple connections open at the same time, switch back and forth from those. So this, this is where that's going to keep track of that. And then, um, and actually for that purpose, we'll go ahead and connect to the Oracle database, where we'll spend most of our time today. And, um, and then down beneath that, you can see the, the details of, uh, of my schema in the Oracle database. So I can see um, the column information for my tables. I can see the data inside of there, and so on. So it's a little bit of an orientation about what we're what we're looking at and where things are, how things are laid out. Um, but as we as we were talking, you know, we're focused on trying to get to the data wherever it resides. We're trying to um, we need a tool that's going to help us get into um, different database platforms and be able to to deliver data ourselves. And so I think you can see that just from the outset, I have the ability to connect to anything. Um, and easily um, begin getting into the data and working with the data directly from a single tool. So, um, you know, right now I've got a connection open to Oracle and to this Excel file. I can switch back and forth between those here, and I can see uh, the data inside of each of, of uh, those connections very simply through Toad for Data Analyst. So I have um, a lot of the tools right there at my disposal to be able to, to do what I, I need to. So let's switch back to... Um, our PowerPoint, let's look at the next challenge, data investigation. This is, this is the big one. This is where we really start to get into um, the, the meat and potatoes of um, what we do on a daily basis. Where does our data reside? How is our database structured? Uh, what are the relationships between um, tables? Uh, you know, relational databases are great because uh, the way that we can store vast amounts of information. But for getting in and building a query, we need to know that 
that some of our data is here and some of our data is there and they're linked together in this way and, and how that is set up is something that we need help to understand, especially if we go into one of those systems that came from the last acquisition, which we're not familiar with yet, right? So the first time you connect to a database, it's a, it's a, a foreign experience. So we'll work with challenging um, uh, processes for, for creating SQL statements and, and uh, building the query and then uh, viewing and verifying this data in real time. So let's go back in here and let's begin working through a scenario. So I'm going to switch back to my Oracle connection and um, I'm going to minimize this little section here where I have all my connections just because I'm working a little bit of a small screen on a laptop here. Okay, so now I've got, let's say I need to get information about uh, customer orders for um, for a given period or for, for um, um, and I need to be able to deliver that back out to someone in, in a business unit. Um, I'm going to begin by trying to understand the data. This is one of those new systems we just acquired a company, and I need to figure out where the data is so I can provide this report so we can go back and contact those customers and let them know about you know the new parent company. So I've got a number of tables listed here. Um, I've connected as uh, the schema that owns these tables, but I could connect with my username and then set this schema to be my default schema. Um, but I, I, can, I can begin sort of clicking around and trying to, to understand what's here. So customer data, I can see that there's a customer table. I can see that I've got columns here. I want to actually click on the data tab because the data tab is going to give me a preview into the data contained inside of the database. Um, but I'm looking for a list of our customers perhaps in a particular region. So let's click on address and I can see now data about regions. I can see state and country, postal codes, and so on. Now, if I'm, if I'm at the beginning of my process, and, or maybe I have a very quick question, and I don't want to spend the time writing a query, I can even use the Database Explorer to actually work with the data uh, directly. So let's say I, I'm trying to figure out um, you know, just somebody from uh, the US. So I can click here, and I can filter through a list of, of, um, of uh, entries. So I can click on US, and that filters my list a bit. And then I can say, well, I know that we need customers from, um, a, like, let's say, California. And then maybe I'm looking for customers in California but in a particular zip code, or maybe I just want to group them. So I can drag the postal code up, and that'll group all of my, um, all of my records by the postal code. And my, my sample data is actually not that interesting. I've got one postal code for, you know, um, for each of the, um, uh, the states, but that's okay. We can still see that, that um, the way that this is working is that I've got um, the ability to, to do some dynamic grouping and filtering directly within the, um, um, the, the UI without writing any queries. And so I can keep doing this. If I wanted to further group, like maybe group on, on city as well, I can sort of nest these, and then I can see how they, how they break out. And I can even do um, summaries and other, other totals directly in the, in the UI here. So, it doesn't work on address data, but just so you know, you know that we can work on summing the data, data or working with min, max, and, and other um, um, other calculations right in the grid. And so I can um, get more information about uh, my data without actually running a query. So this is all actually being done disconnected from the database at this point, um, you know, just on this this cached copy. If I want, if I need to to go out and get more data from the database, it's very easy. We can do that. But right now, I'm just working with a filtered result set. So that's one way that we can look at our data, but you know this this data is actually only semi interesting because we're actually um, missing a number of things that I need for building my query, which would be like the name of the customer, what did they order, when did they order, how much did they order, the um, you know when was their order shipped, and and so on and so forth. So with the relational system that I've got here, I've only got information about the address table um, at, at my current view. So let's let's actually look at the the ER diagrammer. And, uh, and look at how we can use an ER diagram to better understand um, the data here. So I know I need um, information from um, orders. So maybe we take our orders table and we start with that. So I'm just going to drag it on top of here. All right, so this is starting to look a little more interesting. So I've got information here from my orders table. I can see that there's this other table, order item, which is related to that. And so I can also see that uh, the contact ID is uh, related to contact ID in the contact table. I start to get a little bit more information about um, the rest of my customers. So 
that's good, but it's not quite everything. So I need to add a little bit more in here. Um, I'm going to add the address table in here. And, okay, I can see that that's not even linked. Let me actually jump up, and I'm going to change the level relationships to two. And so what that says is um, when, I, when I drop the, the orders table in here, uh, it was set to one. So just show me whatever tables are directly related to orders. If I change this value to two or three or four, we're talking about uh, the, the levels of relationships that extend beyond that. So which table is, is uh, related to orders, uh, which might be order item, for instance, and then what's related to order item as well. So we'll click that. We'll go to two. Actually, I need to redo that because I just the last one I dropped in was address. Okay, so I, I took orders back in here. I've got two levels of, of relationships. I can see now that um, um, I've got orders related to a number of different tables, and this looks like I'm going to have most of the fields that I'm going to need for actually uh, writing my query. Uh, I can see, though, that this address table is not linked, so I'm going to need to link that manually. So in my contact table, I'll take the address ID, and I'll link that to address ID in the address table. And so now I've got sort of this, this dotted hash line, and this is going to just show me that um, this is a, a manual relationship which I created, and that'll be saved on my desktop in Toad for Data Analyst. It won't get pushed back to the database. I'm not making any changes there, um, but that's going to come up the next time that I need it, so that's going to be really helpful. So once I've got this, uh, I, I'm, I'm not interested in region. I don't need the region name, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I don't need the customer name. I'm going to just use first and last name here. I'm going to get rid of that table. Um, and so I'm kind of weeding down the number of tables that I'm working with. Um, I think these are the tables that contain the information I want. I can save this ER diagram as sort of a... Um, uh, a query template so that next time I come in looking to do a, a query based on, um, uh, you know, for customers and orders and things like that, I know that these are the tables and these are the relationships that I need, and so I can bring this up as the starting point for my query. Um, but once I've got the, my tables, I'm going to click this button, Send to Query, and this is going to take all these tables and shoot them over to the Query Builder. Now, again, I'm working on a, a small screen, so I'm going to minimize this lower half here just so we can see our tables and then we'll pull that back up in a second. So you can see that all of my relationships including my manual relationship came over and so that's going to be the join syntax in my query. So let's begin by clicking around on some of the tables. Let's just go left to right. So I know that I'm going to want to get um, information about the warehouse that this came from. I know that I'm going to need quantity and uh, order item and item ID. Um, I'm going to need the item name, retail price. I don't need the picture or description. And I also want the order date and the uh, actual ship date oh, and the amount that they were billed because we want to validate that with um, um, uh, you know, the, the actual um, you know, retail price and make sure that that was accurate. And we want their name here, and we definitely want to filter stuff by state and country. So we've, we've clicked around a lot. Let's see what we put down in this uh, lower half here. There we go. Couldn't click on it for a second. Okay, so I've got all these columns. Let's, try, let's rearrange these so they actually make a little more sense. So we'll probably start with our order ID, and we'll move that to the left. And we want to take our order and go from there and say maybe the order date. And... Um, then we'll, we want our last name to pop up after that. We'll sort of rearrange all of these things so that, so that it's a little bit more readable when we have our final output. So uh, let's take our item ID next and maybe the item name and its retail price, uh, the quantity for the order, and um, we'll do the rest of these like this. We'll leave state, country, warehouse, um, and ship date arranged like that. Okay, so, and we'll add in a, a quick filter. So um, this is getting kind of wide now, but to the left-hand side, this row here is my aggregate. So I can do sums and, and averages and so on. And I've got where conditions, or conditions, and group by, and so on. So let's actually just keep this simple, and we'll just say we want a state where, um, you know, equal to, say, California. We'll just look at the California. And we know that country is going to be the same for all these, so I'm actually going to remove country from my query. We'll just keep it a little bit simpler. Okay, and so we'll run that. And there's my data. Nice and quick, very simple, rearranged all my columns the way I wanted to. 
I can see the query that was written behind that. So this is the SQL syntax that I would have had to have written myself. Um, and for those of you who are SQL junkies, you can notice that we're using ANSI SQL here. You can turn that off if you want and use the standard Oracle or standard, um, let's say, native platform SQL. Um, and um, you know, I can modify this too. So if I if I wanted to add some criteria or or do some something else, I can make changes directly in the SQL here, and that'll that'll actually be reflected back in my diagram and 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 the rest of the UI here. But for my result, this is perfect. This is exactly what I need. I needed to be able to get to the data very quickly, and um, and be able to to summarize this data. So um, that's that's kind of challenge number two. We we're able to get in and and access the data. We we're able to understand where it was, filter it, write a query. Um, very simple drag and drop click and, and um, uh, build the query dynamically like that. So um, the next challenge, and actually, excuse me, I'm, I'm remiss. So one other thing I want to mention is that with, um, with, with data investigation, we talked a little bit about the, um, uh, the ER diagram inside of Toad for Data Analyst, but if you're, if you're more into um, working with uh, ER diagrams and, and, and Building those and um, uh, designing changes, or you, you want to better understand what what uh, how the database is related, you can actually also look at another product from Quest and our Toad family called the Toad Data Modeler, and so this will give you more in-depth information about the um, uh, about the data, the relationships, the tables, um, and how everything is done. So you can see that in the screenshot there. So you'll be able to get more information of. Um, the attributes of those database objects, and you can even add in your own logical data to the diagram um, to keep track of the business requirements. So, and this is this is something that you might want to also look into, um, but we're not actually going to take a, a browse through that today. So, challenge number three: What do we do once we get the data? Um, most of most of the work that we do today is often copy and paste. I, I think um, sometimes we can build some some export. Um, Routines or um, um, you know work with data that way, but a lot of it is you know manual copy and paste from one thing to another out of this tool into Excel and out of that tool back into Excel and so forth. Um, so this is actually, I think, as we all know, very inefficient. Um, but also a lot of the reporting software that we use can even be inefficient when it comes to the workflows. So back to Tool for Data Analyst, I want to make sure that you guys get a good feel of these workflows. Um, let's look at how we can actually work with this data to deliver this data back to, um, you know, the, the business. So one of the one of the coolest things I like about Topher Data Analyst is uh, the um, the ability to do what we call this one quick one click export um, or quick export. So I can see I've got four main options here. I can see those represented up here on the toolbar as well. Um, but these are these are, take the assumption that hey, look, we all work with Microsoft Excel. It's sort of a, a standard format. How do I take this data and get it into Excel so I can keep working uh, in the quickest, most efficient manner possible? So we put these one-click um, export actions in here. So if I wanted to click on this uh, uh, export to a file, I can just say take this data set, dump it to a file on disk, and you know let me let me go. Um, I can and I can choose multiple formats for that. Um, and if you need other formats, we can actually. Uh, you just go to the export wizard, and that'll be a more um, in-depth. Um, uh, you'll you'll have more features for being able to export your data. So like um, text files and um, fixed delimiters, and, uh, excuse me, delimited files and fixed width files and so on. Uh, but this quick export is just going to give you an Excel file or a comma separated or an HTML. I can also say, well, maybe I want to actually start working on the data once I send it out there. So I want to shoot this over to Excel and go ahead and open it. And then I can even, if I'm working with an Excel document and I've got data that I just found in my query that I need to insert into my Excel document at a certain cell, I can do that right there with the active cell command. Um, and the same thing for a pivot table. If I know that I'm going to start pivoting the data, I can just tell Excel to go ahead and open that, open up the pivot, excuse me, the pivot wizard. And um, I can also do that with an, uh, an Excel linked query. So if you have an Excel spreadsheet that's based off of um, data coming from um, you know a single a single source, I can create a linked query uh, Excel sheet, basically a refreshable Microsoft Excel sheet, just from Toad for Data Analyst. I build my query inside of Toad for Data Analyst. I I validate that it's the data that I want, and then I um, I create this linked query so that when I uh, the next time I need the data, I can actually just click refresh inside of Excel, and it'll go back and query the data from the database. 
So um, let's just click on this Excel instance to see how this works. So very quickly, it takes the data in my, in, uh, that came out of my query, drops it into Microsoft Excel, and opens up Excel for me so I can quickly see that I've got all the data in Excel. So I can begin working with that data. But if, I, if my end goal is actually more of a, a report, like a you know, PDF-style report where I've got um, uh, charts and graphs and, and other um, banded information based on these orders, that might make sense. Um, I'm going to also take a look at the TOAD data report. So I can click the Send a Report button here. I've configured it to send the data to the TOAD report. Um, you might want to configure that to send data straight to Excel. That works too. Um, but right now I've, con I've got it configured for the, um, the data wizard in TOAD. So I'm going to say it's a standard report. I want to include all of my um, fields from the query. And um, I'm not going to worry about grouping or anything right now. I'm actually just going to click Finish because we're kind of getting tight on time. And so really quickly, you can see, if you're familiar with um, other products like Crystal, um, which have a, 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 a banded report design, that's what we're looking at here. So for, for every record, um, for every order ID, I want to provide um, details of that order. And that's, that's going to be my, my banded report. So I can, I can change the header. I can change the icon. So you can give it your company's own look and feel. But I can, I can take a look at how that would, would come out here in the, in the preview window and see that, okay, so for, for all of my orders, I'm going to see um, all this um, all of this data wrapped up in a band. So, um, so we've got our two export formats, and um, you know you can see that that you've got um, the ability to quickly shoot data out from uh, Topher Data Analyst into a number of formats. So you're going to sort of eliminate some of the need to do this, this copy and paste and um, and manual aggregation of some of your data. But the last step would be productivity, right? So once we once we've gotten into our database, we've begun investigating the database and working through um, uh, trying to understand uh, how everything is related so that we know which table to, to um, collect data from. We built our query and we, we worked with building um, uh, a report. Wouldn't it be nice that next month we don't have to go through all those steps again when we have to produce the same report? So um, what, with Toad for Data Analyst, we'll be able to take that manual process and break it down into the individual steps and automate that, and then we can even schedule that to happen on a regular basis. So let's go back into Toad for Data Analyst, and let's click on Automate. Now, um, Automate, and I'm hiding, oops, I didn't push the wrong button. I'm going to hide that window here, the, the Navigation Manager, um, the one that we were looking at earlier you can see there. Hopefully your screen is refreshing quick enough. Um, but um, I'm going to hide that for our screen real estate here. And all we want to look at now is the um, just our automation screen. So uh, the automation runs like a um, um, like a um, it runs linearly, like like a you know do this action first, then the next action, and so on. Um, and in recent years, we've actually added in a number of other um, capabilities, so you can do uh, parallel processing and set variables and um, do conditional logic and while and loop. You can see them there at the bottom um, to give you the ability to, to create much more complex scenarios. So, you know, run this script, and if the script uh, returns, you know, zero records, then run this script and send this email, and so on and so forth. So you can build scenarios into your automation. But it, but it, as the UI is concerned, it's actually just top to bottom. So I begin with a list of activities on the left. So I want to create a connection to a database. Um, I'm currently connected right now to um, my um, my Oracle database. I can change that if I wanted to, but I'm just going to say no. Go ahead and connect to that uh, Oracle database. So that's good. And I want to run um, a, a file and um, save the data. So this select a file is an action. I can just drag it and drop it. I'll double click on the action, and this will open up some of the options here. So I can click on my. I want to go find my SQL script. So um, Earlier today, I was working um, with this data, and so I created um, that same query, and I just saved it on, on disk. So that's what I call customer data. And so that's my query. And for the export options, I want to actually send this to an Excel file, and I'm going to choose, um, let's do, um, we'll give it a name of like monthly report. Save that. And let's say I want to add a suffix. Uh, 
you know, sort of a timestamp to that. So I've got the, the raw data um, cached for later uh, review. And then I've got my toad report, which I created and saved. So I can drag that over here, and I want that to happen after I uh, run that query. So the toad report actually uh, has the query built into it. So I don't always have to um, uh, export the data. Click on the wrong button here. One second. Let's open up the um, customer data report, and we want to save the output as, um, you know, let's say a PDF file, and we'll create um, monthly customer report. Okay, and we'll also give that a suffix. Okay, and so then I can do a number of different things. I can say, well, I want to um, zip these files together so I can open this archive here. Um, I want to give this a similar name like customer data um, and then we'll say maybe go down here and say that um, um, I want to collect both of these objects here um, that are coming out of my, um, my automation script. And I can add other files here. If there's another uh, static file that, that's not part of my automation, I can include that here. And so we're done there, and I can click OK. And so I can keep going through this. I can say, well, maybe send an email at the end of that, and then, uh, or I want to actually take that archive and I want to put it up onto an FTP site, or, or maybe the raw data. I want to put the raw data up onto a network share or an FTP site. Um, there's a number of different things which I can do here and, um, and basically take this manual process and turn it into an automated process which I can schedule. Um, so for the, for the sake of time, let's actually just jump straight to scheduling. And once I save my script, um, I'll overwrite that one. Once I save it on, on disk, then I can actually, um, I'll actually be able to integrate this into um, just the, the tasks that get, that get scheduled for my desktop. So um, everything's already set for me. All the parameters are set. Really the only thing I need to do is set the schedule. So let's say we wanted to do this monthly. And we want to do this um, monthly on the first day of the month at, um, let's say, 4 a.m. because we want it to happen uh, at a off, off hours and, um, and click OK. So now we'll actually add our um, uh, machine credentials. Um, and then that way, as long as the machine is on, um, we can actually, that will actually run. So as long as it's on and connected to uh, the network so I can get to the database, it'll actually run and uh, I don't have to think about it. So, um, you know, I can even do that for my own reports. Just, you know, I need data from time to time based on, um, you know, refreshes from our ETL process. So I want, I want to actually um, run an automation script to provide me the, the latest, you know, delta on my desktop every Monday morning. So whatever. There's a number of different scenarios which you could go through. So all of those together really work, work together to provide um, time savings and provide um, you know, better workflow processes for, um, for going through those processes of, of accessing the data, um, investigating the data, delivering it, and then um, um, you know, trying to, to build productivity. So you can see what some of our customers are saying. Um, we have, um, thankfully, a lot of very enthusiastic customers in a lot of different areas from um, finance and retail to healthcare and um, higher education and, um, you know, IT professionals and, and um, business analysts and um, a lot of people in between. So there are a number of people that are using Tilt for Data Analyst today and, and seeing a lot of value in, in it as well. So um, we're actually going to um, close out now and take some Q&A. I wanted to leave you with uh, this, though, before we go to Q&A, uh, and that's Toad World. Toad World is, is your, your one-stop resource for everything related to Toad. So that's education, expertise, um, collaboration, as you see on the screen. So you can, you can connect with other users or with uh, the developers of Toad uh, and be able to communicate with them in the forums. Um, we have um, a lot of our Quest experts providing um, uh, blog postings and other tips and tricks and videos. And so there's, there's a lot there that can help you as a Toad user. Um, and with that, I want to actually go ahead and open it up for Q&A and um, um, be able to respond to, to your questions. So 
So we've got a number of questions here. Okay, so um, first question I see here is, can this tool allow a user to add in a local data source or table and define the joins to a table in a different schema? Um, yes, so what we worked through, the scenario we worked through today um, actually just went through uh, working within a single schema, but I can add objects from, the, from other schemas within the same database instance very easily. Um, one thing which we didn't have time for today, which goes a little bit beyond that, is the concept of actually creating a query which, which runs across databases. So um, if I had an Oracle database and a SQL Server database, and I had some records that I needed joined with records uh, in, in the opposite database, I can do that inside of the query builder. So just like I, I did the drag and drop when I was working in the, um, the ER diagrammer, I can do that in the query builder, drag, drag and drop um, tables from different database connections, and then I can create a manual um, link between those just by dragging one column onto another, and then Topher Data Analyst will do all that work of querying each of the platforms and merging that data for me into a single result set. So that is definitely possible. Um, let's take a look at the next question. Um, the next question is, would this tool be useful for contract work? I would need this for multiple enterprises. Would I need only one license or a license for each entity? Um, so I would say that if you are a contractor, uh, work going from entity to entity. You can you can simply purchase a a license, um, you know, for yourself as a contractor, and then you, you're more than welcome to use that at each of those locations. The, the license is actually granted to you uh, as the name user. Um, conversely, if if you get to a, a site and they don't want you using your own tools or you don't want to pay for it yourself, um, you know, you can you can certainly just have each of those sites uh, purchase a license. But in that case, that that site would own own the license. Uh, and you would need to, to have a license from one of the other entities that you work for. Um, but as long as you, you know, if you jump around within, let's say you, you're you're doing some work uh, here at Quest, and you go from office to office to office doing work, as long as Quest has purchased a license for you, you don't need to to have a different license for each of the offices that you work in, as long because they're all owned by Quest. Um, how much time did it take to build the software, and how many people were involved? Good, great question. So we have uh, we've been working on this software directly since 2007, and we've had a team of uh, which is ranged in size depending upon what stage of the cycle we're in. Of um, I think at the height we had 25 or 30 people working on the product, um, but this is also uh, you know built on top of um, all of our other Toad products. The the Toad products, which were built for Oracle and DB2, SQL Server, and, and the other platforms, and so uh, we had a huge head start when we when we um, when we started working on this back in 2007. Uh, so um, you know the actual answer to your question is a bit of an unknown to me because you know so much work went into um, getting us to that point to even get started. But it kind of gives you an example of of how many people that we had. Um, Okay, how does this help in data migration testing, like checking values and reconciliation, et cetera? Um, we have a number of customers which are working in those scenarios, and they've built um, they've built scripts to check for um, for the data consistency and, and other validation scenarios. And um, for some of them, they they've built the script and they just have a library of scripts. For others, they actually build that into automation, and they take that uh, and, and they do they check for values. So. When I run this script, if there are zero records, that's actually a good thing. And send me an email that ETL uh, process last night worked great, or you know, vice versa. Um, so there are a number of scenarios that you can use for that. And we didn't have a lot of time today to get into all the different nuances of what Toad for Data Analyst can do, but we do have um, we do have features for um, data comparison and synchronization, um, and that kind of goes into a little bit of uh, the next question about um, taking um, uh, being able to move data around a little bit. So if I have an ETL process uh, which is moving, let's say, transactional data from Oracle into maybe a DB2 data warehouse, then I can run uh, the data compare and sync feature, which says compare tables XYZ on Oracle to tables XYZ on, on DB2 and um, show me what's different from one side to the other side or, or so on. 
and then um, I can out of that I can build a synchronization script which I which I can run uh, to to you know make that update or I can build I can send out a report that just says these records didn't come up come across uh, perfectly in the ETL process last night and so on. So there's a, a number of different scenarios which which can um, can help. Um, can you schedule a job to run after another job completes, or is it strictly a timed schedule? Um, I think I think in this latest version, we're in version 2.6 right now. Um, you can actually um, nest the automation routines. Um, but another another option might simply be to use that um, the the if conditions, so that um, you can say you know run these things, and then if we hit you know whatever threshold or we hit some sort of criteria, then I want something else to happen, uh, for instance. But I, I think you can um, you can actually um, string together multiple processes in here too. So I only showed you one single process of just running a query and running a report and sending that out. But I could have said, run these five queries, run these five reports, and I'd put them in order and you know, connect to this database and run these five things and then connect to that database and run these five things and then connect to another database and do these five things. And that would be one automation script and it would all happen in that order that I, that I defined. Um, can we create some forecasting logic for the report like, like building charts and graphs? The, the work like build price for, forecasting, et cetera. Um, yeah, so I think I think you can. I'm trying to understand the question um, directly, but I think I think what you're looking for with the charts and graphs would be um, uh, uh, being able to create more of a dynamic report and graph, which you can you can update uh, based on or refresh based on uh, new data, and you can do that in Topher Data Analyst too. It's yet another feature which we didn't have time for today. Uh, but you can you can create a pivot chart or um, other graphs and uh, charts, and then um, those are actually based on a SQL statement. So when I open up that chart, we can you can click on refresh; it'll go back to the database, uh, run that query again, refresh the data, and provide an, an updated view of that um, chart or graph. Uh, does the schedule allow for automation of delivery reports, i.e., via email? Um, Yes, it does, but actually that's not a feature of the scheduler, um, which is actually Windows scheduler. That's, an, that's a, um, a feature of the, um, the automation itself. So um, in the scenario that I built, I, th I think at the end I clicked on email, maybe I didn't, but that's actually one of the actions that you can do, is that you, can, you would build that into your automation script. So at the end of your automation script, you've done all these other amazing steps and you've got everything the way you want, you would add a, an email step uh, to say, you know, email this data to me or email people and let them know that the, uh, the, the reports are sitting out on the server somewhere or, you know, whatever else you need to do. Um, you can also arrange that uh, each of the, um, through each stage of the automation script, um, if an error happens, it can send you an email so that you know, like, if there's a process running overnight that, you know, the automation broke at a certain point that, you know, you know that before you come back in in the morning. Uh, is there any provisional support for working with OLAP cubes? Great question. Uh, that is actually something that we are um, uh, heavily investigating for um, for our, one of our releases next year. So I, I highly anticipate that the answer to that, um, like somewhere around um, spring or summer, will be yes. But currently it's no. We don't have support for, uh, for working with cubes. Um, I've worked with the SAS BI Studio recently and found that it consumes a lot of memory due to the UI. I wonder if Toad is also memory intensive. Um, so Toad, is, memory is something that we have we have focused on um, very heavily. We want to make sure that our Toad product um, is um, you know uses only as much memory as, as is needed. And um, so so I believe that the the quick answer to that is yes. But there is a caveat. If you're if you've got a query which returns a million rows, and um, uh, you know you've got you know, large object data like pictures and things in there. That's all. That data um, has to be loaded into memory at some point as we build the graph, or we build the um, uh, the, the charts and, and um, uh, the data grid inside of Toad for Data Analyst. And that's going to be the same with just about any product that you that you work with. Um, but one one nice thing about Toad for Data Analyst, um, and I've worked with SaaS users and and. They've been very frank with me that um, Toad for Data Analyst is much 
faster at connecting, much faster at querying and getting those results. Um, but but one nice thing about Clipper Data Analyst is if I want to just take the data from the database and dump it to some sort of flat file or uh, an Excel file, and I'm not really trying to load it into the UI so that I, I can look at it in the grid, um, I can actually bypass all of that and I get huge performance and huge memory uh, savings when I do that. So I would do that through the export wizard. If I go in under the tools menu and click on export, I can see uh, that one of the export format um, or, or let's say sources for, of you know what data do you want to export is actually a query itself. So I enter the SQL right there into the, the export wizard and then I define what my output format is and then the, uh, the export engine actually runs uh, runs the query and takes the data and, and writes it straight to disk so I don't see that memory um, uh, hit. So that's a, a really nice way to work with um, work with data and, and um, uh, you know and deal with with memory constraints. But short answer is yeah I believe it, it's um, it's been optimized as much as we can and we continue to focus on that as a priority. And so with that, I believe we've worked through our questions and we've reached the end of our time. So I will hand it back over to Adrian. So thank you very much for your help. Great. Thank you, Daniel, for a very informative presentation. Thank you to everyone for attending today's Modern Analyst webinar. I wanted to point out the webinar, along with the slides, will be archived at modernanalyst.com within a few days. This concludes today's event. We hope you have a great day.